the world consists of both the living and the non-living. But how do we segregate the two? We can do so by looking out for certain characteristics associated with living organisms. However, these characteristics can be definitive or non-definitive. One such characteristic is growth. Living organisms, whether multicellular or unicellular, grow due to cell division. However, cell division affects these organisms differently. In a multicellular organism, cell division results in an increase in mass, whereas in a unicellular organism like amoeba, it leads to the formation of two new organisms. Interestingly, plants grow through cell division throughout their lifespan. While animals, including humans, grow up to a certain age. After that, cell division occurs only when the body has to replace lost cells in certain tissues. However, everything that grows cannot be said to be a living organism. Take the example of a rock that will grow in size if sand gets deposited over it. However, this growth is external. On the contrary, growth in living organisms is internal. Growth is, thus, a characteristic feature of living organisms, though it is a non-definitive one. Reproduction is another important characteristic of living organisms. In unicellular organisms, reproduction and growth are synonymous as both lead to an increase in the number of cells. This is not the case with multicellular organisms, where reproduction leads to the creation of an offspring. These organisms reproduce either sexually or asexually. Sexual reproduction can be seen in higher organisms like man and animals. Asexual reproduction can be seen in lower organisms through budding as seen in yeast or through fragmentation as observed in flatworm. However, certain organisms, such as sterile worker bees, are not capable of reproducing. But that doesn't mean they are non-living. Reproduction is therefore not a definitive characteristic of the living. Metabolism is also a characteristic of living organisms. We know that organisms are made up of chemicals. These chemicals are constantly produced in living beings and converted into biomolecules. These conversions are called chemical or metabolic reactions. The sum total of all such reactions is known as metabolism. It is interesting to note that such chemical reactions can also be imitated in a laboratory. However, such isolated reactions taking place in vitro are not considered living organisms, but are classified as living reactions. We can therefore state that metabolism is a definitive feature of living organisms. Cellular organization is another important characteristic of living organisms. Such organization is not observed in the non-living. And hence, cellular organization is also a definitive feature in all life forms. 
Consciousness is another feature associated with living organisms. We know that all living organisms sense and respond to environmental stimuli such as light, water and temperature. For instance, a sunflower always faces the sun. Humans too respond to environmental stimuli and are aware of their surroundings and themselves. For instance, in winters, they wear woolens to keep their bodies warm. Non-living objects don't respond to external stimuli. Consciousness is therefore another definitive characteristic of a living being. Thus we can say that metabolism, cellular organization and consciousness are the three definitive characteristics of living organisms.